So hi everyone. Um, welcome to my channel. <laughs> this is my very first video tutorial that I'm doing um, and you will notice because I'm completely newbie at this. But um, so most of you have seen uh, these bags that I posted on a few Facebook groups and um, you did ask if there was a video showing how I made them. Now the process itself it's very simple. Probably my biggest challenge is try to explain in this video in a clear way. But these are the bags. You've seen three of them. This was my first attempt to do the video. Um, you will see uh, probably a couple of snippets of this but we will try to do a brand new one so I can actually show you well what I did. Um, and yeah, these are the ones. Um, most of you went, uh, um, were very excited about the fake Chanel one. Now, again, this is a copyright infringement. This is a, a copy and paste of the actual Chanel logo. It's illegal. I'm not selling this. I'm not making more of this. I will not profit of this. It was just, um, just for fun because, I mean, it just felt like a wee Chanel bag. Now, I will be using a Centro 48 machine and you will also need a Centro or any other 22 pin machine for this project. So, we are going to start with uh, waste yarn. You will need waste yarn for all three tubes. So, you will have the tube for the body, the tube for the uh, clasp closure and the wee tube for making the bow. And in all of three, you will need uh, cast on and cast off with waste yarn. Make sure that you use a contrasting color so it's easy to spot. Bring your machine to the last needle, the one that has the different color from the rest, and you start with looping the, the, the waist yarn. So in front of the, the first needle, this one, then to the back of the next one, then front, then back, front, back, front, and so on until you go all the way around. Take your time. Make sure you're not skipping anything. And you need to finish at the back of the last needle before your new round starts. Feed it in a yarn feeder, put it in the tensioner, and start cranking. Now, now I came a little bit short on it. Make sure you don't do my mistake, so have plenty of yarn for yourself. But I'm at five rows, so for me it's more than enough as a cast on. I will need to make sure that I have more, at least double this, when I'm casting off. So today we are going to make a grey and white. I have the grey that's uh, both are in yarn. This is a, this one here. And then we have the special craft. Now, I will suggest to attempt these projects with an iron yarn weight or a worsted weight yard. Now, for this project, you have the option to either start with a very long tail or just a normal tail and then you will use extra yarn at, at the end of it. Meaning that whenever it's time to um, attach the handle, you will need to use a single crochet stitch and is just how you feel more comfortable, either using the yarn that's already attached to the end of your project or using a brand new yarn. I'd rather use a brand new yarn just because I can, I can never really figure out how much yarn I will need. So, put it in. 
next to the whisker and I like to clamp it with a wee um, peg just to keep it in place. Set your counter and there you go. So this is already 10 rows done. I'll catch up with you once we are finished with the 80 rows and we are ready to cast off with the waste yarn. Okay, so now is the time to cast off. And remember, you still need uh, waste yarn for this. As I said before, being this the cast off, I like to uh, make more rows than the cast on, just to be safe. Now, um, in this case, most of you already know, you just keep cranking, keep cranking, and the project will just fall off of the machine. No need to do anything more about it, so I'm not worried where my yarn finished at what point. And here we have it. Let's stretch it. And put this aside. And then we can start making the two tubes uh, with the 22. Same process, you start with waste yarn, you crank. Um, the tubes now for the clasp and when I say the clasp I mean this part here this is about 30 rows and the wee bow is about 20 20 to 23 rows I shall see you once we are done this is what we have and what I like to do, but again, personal preference, I like to have the wee bow matching the body of the uh, of the bag and the clasp with a contrasting color. 
just to give a little bit of a something something okay so as you can see we have now three tubes big one that's the body of the bag the bow and the clasp now we need to go ahead and put it all together um, let's start with the easy part that's closing up the wee tubes first wee tube this is a clasp this is what will go like this for the closure of the wee bag this is done you can put it on the side here for more now we do the bow okay so the last tube of the wee ones is done so this is the bow we can make the bow together so first of all what I like to do is get rid of the ends because they're just annoying here you can go two ways you can either um, make the bow using the same color of yarn or in this case I'm using the white as a contrast just to give it a little bit of interest but this is these are all personal choices so it's up to you how you want to do it in any case this is the way I make the bow so first of all I pinch in the middle and then I bring the sides in okay So pinch in the middle and bring the sides in. Yes, just to keep the shape to start, put a wee stitch marker. Back in front, but again, just to keep the shape. And then with the needle and the yarn. I'll thread the needle in the center, I'll eyeball it and then just onto the side, back down, pull it a little bit and then back up again and this is just to keep the shape. At this point I can remove the stitch markers, I don't need them. Once again, I'll go in. Do you need to remember to be in camera and frame? Okay. So, this is the wee bow. Now, the, the shape is set, and what I like to do is this you start wrapping in a tightish way tight enough but not to strangle the the bow just give it a little bit of a Okay. And when they start, I mean, when it looks good to you, then stop. That, that's it. No need to go any further. Secure the yarn. There you go. That's it. Secure the yarn. And here you have it. Now, just to be safe rather than sorry, I like to add a couple of knots. So 
go. This is not going anywhere. Now, what you can do is you can use these tails. This is the easy way that I managed to figure out for attaching the bow. So I thread this tail to the other side. Where I And I am threading this other tail on the same side that's already sits already, but a little bit down, picking up a wee stitch. So I have these two tails on the base of the bow. Now, with a wee another piece of scrap yarn, no need that much. You thread the top. Just pull it across, picking maybe a stitch or two on the grey, stitch or two on the other side of the grey, and underneath the white. So now you have these four strands of yarn. Get back, take the, the clasp part that we made before. Hide the tails. The way I do it. It's always at the bit of one of the ends. Just leave maybe a wee two stitches. You thread your needle, and the best way to do this is to have one of these needles here. I don't know if you can see it. These yarn needles, they're great. So you can thread your needle first, then thread your yarn, and pull it across. Again. Same thing with the two at the back. This is what you have, the four strands at the back. Now what I do is simply knot them together, tighten off, just make a couple of knots so the bow doesn't go anywhere. Okay, let's hide the yarn.
this is a clasp. Now you need one last thing to finish this piece. And this is the wee loop that we have here. That we'll poke out of here. And that allows you to close it with a button. The way I do it is just I do a wee chain with a crochet chain. Just loop it around. But I mean, it's again up to you. If you know how to crochet, I'm not that good at it, but you can actually do a nice decorative border here. Or if you don't know how to crochet, but maybe you have um, like a magnetic closure, you can just sew it on and do it as a magnetic closure. Up to you. I'll do the wee chain, and the way I do it is. Again, eyeball the middle, and it's the middle of the clasp, but also more or less matching the middle of your bow. Loop your yarn from the ball on your hook and pull it across. And then chain one. Usually I do Ten chains. And ten. And this is the way, more or less, I measure it. So I, I just put it across and see. If I feel that the loop it's big enough or not, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, based also on the kind of button that I want to use, and obviously I know what I have in my stash, then it's entirely up to you. If you want to use a, a a very big button, then you might want to increase the number of chains to make a bigger loop to accommodate that. Um, I think I'll do just a couple of more. Okay, now back into the same stitch. She says, let's try again. Back into the same stitch, pull your yarn over. And this and slip stitch. Cut your yarn, pull it through, take your needle, thread it through just for extra safety net. And just tie a knot. It's not too tight, but tight enough. your tails okay and the recasp is done so you can put this aside and then we can work on the actual bag. Okay, so again, we are at the tricky part, if we want to call it this way. It's the, out of all the project, this is the part that's a little bit more fiddly, 
if you want to put a better choice of words. So we can take this off. We don't need it anymore. So at this point, we will need the handles of the bag. I have these D-shape handles. They're plastic. They come in a set of four. I got them out of Amazon UK. Um, if I remember, I'll share the link. But I know I posted the link of these things. Or was it just a picture? On one of the Facebook groups. But anyway, I will share the links. Um, and what we are doing now is we need to close the ends of the tube, both ends. But while we are closing the ends, we will need to incorporate the handle in it. So this is the idea. You feed the handle and then you start closing it together. Okay, so you should be able to see it a little bit better and I should be able to lean on the table because again it's fiddly. And this is the point where I said that I like to use uh, a working yarn out of the ball rather than having a very long tail on the project. But it's all personal choices. It's all it all depends on what you feel more comfortable with. But what we need to do is to find the half of it. So again, this is the tube that came out of the 48 needle machine. So I'm going to count 24 stitches. So I know where is my half. And the reason why I do this, because, I mean, yes, you can eyeball it. But then I don't want to run the risk of twisting the tube. If my eyeball on the other side doesn't really match the one on this side. So if I count the stitch and then that, that's it. Okay. So these are the my starting point. Now to start with the metal that I'm using, what I need to do is I pick these two stitches up. I thread the working yarn. So I have a loop now and I do chain one. So this is my starting point. I put in the handle. Then I know I need to go and grab the other two stitches, one on each side. So the following one. So you have one here. And one, let's see if I can. So we have this one and this one. And this is where the fiddly bit comes in because I need to grab this one here, go inside the handle, pull my work, and grab this one here. Now that I have the two loops, actually the three loops on my crochet hook, what I'm going to do is get the working yarn, go inside the first loop, inside the second loop. So now I'm left with two loops on my crochet hook. I hope you can see it. And pick the yarn and loop it across again. Let's do it one more time. So we start with one loop on the crochet hook. Here it is. We pick up one stitch from the side that's closer to you. Keep your working yarn in your hand so you're not losing it. Then go to the other side of the tube and pick the first three stitch. That's this one. 
So what you have now is three loops on your hoop on your hoop. So one, two, three. Grab the working yarn through the first loop, through the second loop. So you have only two loops left on your hoop. Then grab your working yarn again and through the two loops and you're left with one. Now keep your working yarn at a decent tension. You don't want the loop on your crochet hook to be too tight or too loose. Again, that will come with practice if you're not uh, used to crochet. I am not a crocheter, but I did learn to do at least these couple of basic stitches um, that helps me with these kind of projects. So again, we start with one loop. We pick up one stitch closer to us, the stitch on the other side, get the yarn through the first two loops, the two stitches. Now you have two loops on your crochet hook. Grab the yarn again and through. One more time. You start with one loop. Pick the stitch. Pick the other stitch. Grab the yarn. Through the first two loops. Grab the yarn and through again. So here is where it's going to start to get a little bit more tricky because obviously you're getting to the end, you don't have as much space to work with, but just take your time, again, two stitches, pull through and pull through again, two stitches, pull through and pull through again, two stitches, Stitches, pull through and pull through again, and now we are at the very tricky part. This is where you might want to put your handle back in the in the right up position. Um, now, what I do here is I don't even try to feed these last two stitches in the inside because the yarn is bulky and it's already crammed up in here so it, it's beginning to be a little bit more challenging so what you can do is just pick up the yarn from the outside pick this one up pick this one up Again, here your best bet would be to use stitch markers so you don't lose your stitches here, but I didn't, I forgot. And again, thread through and through again. And then chain one. Cut your yarn. Leave a little bit of a tail because we will need to tidy this part off once we get the waist yarn off. Okay. And here you have it. Now, the reason why I say you need to tidy it up is the way we close the very last stitch, it will create this. So uh, what I do is just, I will stitch around it a little bit just to reduce this loop here. So I'm grab one of the ends, feed it through, feed it through. Okay. 
bring it back down. Again, better safe than sorry. I like to tie a wee knot here. Okay. And then you can just pack. Yeah. Same with this other strand of yarn. And here you have it. This is the far side of the, um, the handle. What I'm doing here is going to tie a wee knot and this is just below the flat edge of the, of the handle. And it's not going anywhere. Okay, so we are back. We are done in the sense that uh, <laughs> we have the handles in place. So this is what you're left with. The tube with the two ends closed and the handle inside. What we need to do now is grab the handles, fold the tube in half, and you want to mattress stitch the sides. Um, when you mattress stitch, you want to just leave a little bit of an opening near the handles, just to allow for a bigger gap. Uh, otherwise, it would just be too much of a tight space. So I would say roughly 10 stitches down. And then you start. Now, for the mattress stitch, let me just. You need to find the same column of stitches, the same um, sense, if that, that's a word, the same direction, sorry, the same direction in both sides. So hopefully you can see it. But here you have the stitches with the point going left. So I need to find a column with the same direction of the stitches here. Okay, grab your working yarn. So hopefully you can see it. What I like to do, and for sure there is a, an easier way of doing this, So you start threading from the corner and we said we need the two columns going the same direction. This is my working yarn here. You need to, to do a mattress stitch, you need to grab two of these posts, these stitches inside. See them? So you have the column like this, you go inside at the base of the, the B. Pick one up and you pick the other one up and you pull through. Then you come on the other side and you do the same and you pick two up. Now 
Right, you see here, this is where the yarn came out from this column. So you go back in from the same hole stitch that the yarn came out from. Go back in and pick two stitches and thread the yarn. Now, this is the part where you don't want to pull too hard because not pulling too hard, it will let you easily see where your yarn is coming out from. So back from where the yarn came out and you pick. Two stitches and you pull. And here you have it. So this is, we are done. No more stitches to pick. So what you want to do is you grab one end and you grab the other end and you pull. And this closes up the side and you don't see it. in the process. Tie we knot. Just tie the yarn. And there is one side one. And here we are, we are back. Um, so the two sides are done. This is the opening. So, I mean, very size opening. This is one side, and this is the other one. So, what we are left to do to complete the bag is to attach this wee clasp. Again, for me, is a lot of eyeballing. So what I do is just I put the clasp inside the handles around the, both of them just to get an idea where I wanted them to be. Obviously, I need to be able to have the bow flat on the other side. And the end. I would say again, roughly at the same level of your opening, give or take, just to have an idea. But yeah, this looks good to me, so this is where I'm gonna sew the wee cusp. And this is turning into a nice, stinking cute wee bag. All you need to do is pick a button, sew it here. So it can loop around and stay close. But yeah, this is the bag finished. If you want to decorate it, you can decorate it whatever way you want it. So, again, thank you so much if you have lasted this long. Um, I would like to do more videos like this, so hopefully in time I will improve. Um, but Feel free to leave a couple of comments if you want, feedbacks, uh, please constructive ones. And yeah, thank you again. Thank you, thank you so much. I shall see you soon. Bye.